Isolde Ito, more commonly known as Issa, is one of the main characters of Cygnaus, being the only friendly character who we meet multiple times throughout our journey. Her story and what happens to her over the events of the game will be the focus of today's video. So really, with no more delay, let's get right into this. We can start off by covering how we see her throughout the events of the game and then transition to theory. The very first time we see Issa is during the intro cutscene, where we see her slicing her hand above a ritual of sorts, but only really for a few frames. I will return to this later. We first meet Issa at the start of the game though, upon reaching the Serpensky facility library and discovering a safe code. Elster will find her after finishing off one of the corrupted replicas in the installation with a knife. She will then have a short conversation with Elster. Oh, hello. You don't belong here either, do you? I'm Issa. Issa Ito. You should be careful. There's something wrong with this place. I don't know what happened, but it's probably dangerous to go any further. That's okay. I understand. I have something I need to do too. Take care. I hope you find who you're looking for. Searching in the room, we can find Issa's note to Erica, which states, Erica, if you find this note, despite everything that's happened, I've come looking for you. Elster can encounter Issa again if she takes the elevator up to the first floor at the end of personnel. Speaking with her here, she says the following, Ah, it's you again. I'm glad to see you're still okay. Have you found what you're looking for? I'm looking for someone too. My sister. If you see her... Could you tell her I'm looking for her? Don't worry, you'll recognize her when you see her. Ever wondered if you're speaking to someone for the last time without knowing? I wish I could go back, so I could say something else. This place is very strange, isn't it? I wonder what happened here, but it doesn't really matter. You don't need to worry about me. I can take care of myself now. I can't keep relying on others. That's why she left me, after all. I'm sure of that now. As Elster continues, Elster will eventually be pushed down an elevator shaft by Adler. Following this, a memory of Issa's is shown, displaying her earlier years in school with her sister, as she wakes up late and heads to the library to find her sister, only to catch a glimpse of Arion being bullied by the other Gestalt students. During this session, she says the following. You must have fallen asleep while waiting for Erica. Did she go home without me? You wanted to get some books from the library together. I should check if she's still there. It's empty. The Yule always wipes it before I can get down all my notes, so I have to copy Erica's. I'm glad we're in the same class, even if it confuses the teachers. We then see from her perspective Arion being bullied as a child, an event that is theorized to be integral in both of the Ito's wives, as well as the relationship they have with Arion, as Erica was the one who arrived to stop the bullies. Later on, after descending down a hole in the lower star dorm, the player will be able to watch a cutscene where Issa meets Ador. In this cutscene, she states the following. Who are you? Following this cutscene, she runs away and we do not see her until a later cutscene that plays at the start of the mines. This cutscene shows Issa being hunted by Adler with a rifle as she hides behind one of the mine support beams as he speaks, saying that he has done this several times and that Issa does not belong here, only then to be ambushed by Issa from behind who stabs him in the eye before pushing him into the hole. We see her later again in the nowhere section where after jumping into the pulsating, grotesque hole of flesh, the player can find Issa nearly being killed by a large creature with several limbs, the Chimera. Shifting its focus to Elster instead, we give Issa time to reload the rifle, and she carries on, shooting it down. Falling unconscious due to the recoil, because it's a very powerful Nitro Express rifle. If Elster finds the small bottle, she can use it to wake up Issa. Upon waking up Issa, she will thank Elster and give her the rifle saying the following. It's you. Esler, right? Thank you for your help. Did you find it who you were looking for yet? Uh, that rifle. 
I don't think I want to use it again. You can have it. I'm so exhausted. I feel sick. It's hard to breathe. The air in this place feels sick. Like you could bite it. It's like there's a fog in my head. I need a moment to rest. Advancing further to Chapter 3, before reaching Rotfront, a brief cutscene will display Issa's state. Shocked and afraid of her hand as she looks at herself in the mirror, having suffered more wounds and possibly losing her eye, her fingers are also corrupting quickly. Entering the Ito family store much later into Rotfront will reveal one final cutscene. Issa is seen on the brink of death. Her body is heavily corrupted, her arms are rusted, and the corruption is quickly spreading through her body as she apologizes to Elster, explaining that she couldn't find her and that she isn't here anymore, referring to her sister, trying to touch Elster before melting into the floor. So with the main events of the game out of the way, we can go into theories regarding Issa. The King in Yellow The first time we see Issa is doing the ritual. This combined with theories and knowledge regarding the King in Yellow conveys that she at least played a part in the corruption of the facility in order to find her sister. The King in Yellow also plays a part in that there are several parts of the game where Elster acquires Issa's memories, or at least the player does. This blending can be seen indicative of the King's abilities to cause people to assume roles of characters, with Issa's role being similar to Elster's, thus their slow merging over the events of the game. If these things are to be believed, then Issa's death at the end of the game would likely have weakened the ritual, or at very least made it easier to influence, as one of its users no longer lived which creates a situation where Elster can actually finish the cycle. The fate of Issa is something that is confusing to many, as she dies before her eyes, yet it is implied that she has long been dead. A possible answer for this is that her death is circular. Much like the acquisition of armor for Elster, there are some events in Signalis that don't seem to follow the normal flow of time. If this is to believe, then Issa's action of doing the ritual puts her into the cycle, and by dying at the end of the ritual, she dies in reality. To explain this in a easier way, if you are someone in normal reality and you are removed from normal reality to some mystical place or some looped period of time, to people living in normal reality, you simply disappeared, and thus they may assume that you died. Which means that her true death was the one we saw, meaning when we saw her decay into the pile of flesh, that is when Issa actually dies. Another way to read this would be saying that when she dies in the cycle, it is impossible for her to return to her normal reality, which means by dying in the cycle, it was inevitable that she would die in reality, and thus why we see what we see. A similar story can be seen within Chambers, Kane, and Yellow, where a character's return to normal time is interpreted as death in Mademoiselle de Y. Finally, Tarot. Tarot cards are something that are quite important throughout Signalis, and interestingly, Issa's journey can be seen as reflective of the first six cards of the tarot. First card, Magician, when we meet her. You are unique and have special skills or beginning of a journey. Honestly, this card could mean and apply to anyone, so very easy match. The second card, though, High Priestess, listen to your inner voice, inner awareness. Issa's memory cutscene is really where this comes into play. When it arrives, stop looking for answers outside and look inside. The fact is, no one in S23 has answers about what happened to Erica, and really only by accepting Erica is gone should she actually find peace. So the second card is called in by the memory cutscene by if Issa really processed what occurred in that memory and didn't really focus on the self-blame, she might have been able to find answers as to what happened to Erica. The third card, Empress. This one is rather simple. The third time we see Issa, she is trying to speak to Falk. Fourth one, Emperor. Once again, very simple. Fourth time we see her, she is running away from Adler. I feel like those two are the ones that most heavily correlate. The fifth one is Hierophant. It's about finding answers from spiritual means, or perhaps means outside normal reality. In Signalis, bioresonance is worship to a degree, as some higher power. Think of this god won't forgive you when Falk says it. It's really something indicative of it is some type of spiritual thing. And the Chimera is definitely a bioresonant thing, or at the very least, something outside normal reality. So, the fifth card being Hierophant, and Issa being in nowhere and having the Chimera, it kind of ties together. The sixth card is Lovers. Lovers isn't just about romantic love, it can be about any love, so sisterly love applies. Issa's story ends with her succumbing to her corruption upon the learning of her sister's fate. She loved her sister so much that the news was too much for her to bear, and she decayed. 
she simply journey ended. These six cards seem to relatively follow the general story of Issa, and seeing how Issa is a main character and how tarot cards are quite important to Signalis, I'm not too sure that this is just a coincidence, but that's up for you guys to decide. With that now covered, most of the integral lore has been covered for this main character. I feel as though now that we have the context of the King in Yellow, understanding characters like this just kind of feels simpler, and it's nice to be able to finally make progress in general. In other news, the story of Issa will be made into a short cinematic on my channel in the coming days, so hopefully y'all will enjoy that. If you'd like to talk to other Signalis fans about the lore, or just in general, in my description I have the main Discord VSL linked, uh, it's where I'll be discussing theories, lore, modding, I talk about all sorts of stuff there. Um, as we begin to march forward, I'm going to be talking a lot about other theories there, so hopefully some of y'all swing over. Finally, once again, thank you to Mr. Skelly for supporting my membership. Your contributions help make this series possible. So with that, this has been Christopher Beast, and I'll see y'all, well, hopefully next time.